Greetings my dear dear friends, Dragon here once again and today talking about The One Percenter, uh, just about to be released from Third Wonder Films. It comes out on the 11th of March. I got my copy a little bit early thanks to the incredible joy at Terracotta. I'm not special but if you pre-order um, through Terracotta he'll generally send out the Third Wonder stock as soon as he gets his hands on it so usually kind of get a little bit early. And um, the latest film starring Sakaguchi Tak who I've been a huge fan of for a very very long time I think since I saw him in Versus some 20 odd years ago now probably um, and this is in some ways a bit of a, a reunion of sorts of some of the Versus crew. Uh, it's directed by uh, Yudai Yamaguchi who also wrote Versus and the two have collaborated over the years a number of times. I think Tag was in uh, Battlefield Baseball which was uh, Yamaguchi's directorial debut I think and then more recently they worked together on a Yakuza weapon um, that was shot over an incredibly short period of time as I suspect this one was too. But quickly looking at the synopsis on the back it's saying action film actor Toshiro Takuma is a man with only one goal, the perfection of action film acting, but when his samurai approach to the profession clashes with an industry addicted to wires, CGI and quick edits, Toshiro and his trusty apprentice Akira decide to make their dream film themselves. When actual violence finds its way onto their film set in the form of Yakuza mobsters looking for a hidden cache of drugs, Toshiro and Akira are suddenly thrust into action is this an ideal opportunity to take his real action to the next level? As lives are lost in chaos and choose, Toshio finds that the gap between action, fantasy and reality isn't quite what he thought. Um, and in some ways that last line is the most telling of the synopsis on the back. Um, because this in many ways is so closely aligned to kind of attack Sakuchi's own path in a way. It could almost be a documentary in places. There's a, a kind of fictitious movie within the film that the our, our action star has previously been in that's been really successful in the film it's called Birth but I think really they're talking about Reborn um, which Sakaguchi was in several years ago which was immensely successful and I highly highly recommend that you get a chance to see it um, but one of the things that that movie um, kind of really uh, brought Tak into doing was it kind of aligned him with this um, this martial artist stuntman I think sometimes bodyguard, former soldier uh, called Inagawa um, Yoshitaka, who devised a kind of combat system called Zero Range, and then a sort of evolution of that that they call Wave, that in some ways is kind of like a Japanese take on an awful lot of the philosophies that Bruce Lee had um, behind what he was trying to do with Jeet Kune Do. So the idea of having the, the, the art or the style of having no style, so kind of this very almost improvised fighting style. Um, and that's worked into the narrative a lot where our our main actor, um, Toshiro, played by Tak Sakaguchi, is speaking about his frustration with kind of what he describes as kind of dance choreography or dance-like choreography that, that he's frustrated with in action movies. And he's looking for something that's more akin to almost like method acting. So it can be more like a conversation, more free flowing without any kind of real set form. Um, and that's what he's largely obsessed with and that's why he's very frustrated with the kind of more con sort of conventional ways that action movies generally stage their action. They take some pot shots, some shots fired at the Ruri Kenshin movies, which that bit I wasn't so into because I'm a huge, huge fan of the Ruri Kenshin movies and a massive fan of the wonderful choreographer behind those films, Kenji Tanagaki, who's been very kindly to me was a guest on this channel. Please, I'll leave a link down below and you can check out my interview with Kenji. There is a character in the film that I wondered is a sort of thinly veiled, semi-friendly parody of Kenji, which, um, yeah, wasn't so into that bit, but that's a very small part of the film. And then it moves on to um, Toshiro and his, um, his apprentice Akira going to the location scout. And that's really where the bulk of the action of the film takes place. And um, they're on a, a sort of abandoned um, factory uh, on a kind of semi-remote little island with zero cell phone signal and that's really where the sort of the, the Yakuza guys descend into looking for this cache of, of kind of hidden drugs and then basically their, their two worlds are thrust into each other and um, so that part of the film plays out quite like a conventional film the beginning of the film starts almost like a mockumentary where you kind of see interviews with with Tak in character speaking about his sort of ethos to action which is a lot like when you hear Tak speaking about his actual ethos to action, particularly as, as it kind of relates to, uh, to zero range combat and wave. He has his own YouTube channel. There's actually got two. I think there's a Japanese language one and he also has an English language one. Again, I'll leave a link down to that below because it's worth subscribing. I think Tak's English language channel has less subs than I do so, and I don't have a huge channel. So do please follow the link and subscribe because um, if you enjoy the action that's in here, there's a whole bunch of, of examples of that 
often with the his master um, with Inagawa um, the two of them seem to kind of go head to head once a year in different sort of settings um, and sort of demonstrate uh, zero range and the way of combat style that Inagawa had developed and that Sakaguchi is very much a disciple of and it's a kind of interesting form to see I think it draws sort of little bits from Eskrima and from um, kind of more Indonesian style martial arts so quite similar to some of the movements that you'll see in the raid movies and um, very 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 close kind of close counters um, less reliant on kind of kicks and punches it's a lots of blocks lots of improvised weapons but really entertaining and, and kind of the examples that we see in the film once it kind of gets into its main action section really 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 well done um, incredibly fast um, and really inventive with some of the things that he's using flashlights are, i think are an actual kind of part of, of zero range combat's technique arsenal um, kind of particularly in sort of low light situations he's kind of using the light to sort of dazzle people and then attack them and using it as a weapon as a sort of striking weapon very cool and kind of stuff that i haven't really kind of seen in anything else before and tax certainly an absolute master of this it's really weird seeing tax career evolve over the last sort of 20 years or so since i first saw him in, in verses which i also highly recommend you pick up our um our video has a great release of verses um, which has kind of got an extended cut on it. It's an incredible low-budget movie um, from 2000 and... Oh, I think 2004. Um, so exactly 20 years old this year. Um, and is a pretty wonderful introduction to Tack. Um, there's fighting style that he's sort of evolved into that looks quite different to what we saw in Versus. Um, and he's kind of continued to sort of appear more as a supporting character over the last sort of five or ten years. Got a pretty notable cameo in 2022's Bad City as a kind of mute character but kind of stole the show really of the scenes that he was in similar story to Sion Sono's uh, Prisoners of the Ghostland with Nicolas Cage again he was playing a character who didn't speak who just kind of showed up to kind of kick ass and more of a sort of samurai type character in that movie um, but yeah he's just always really entertaining to watch on screen and I kind of wonder why he's never broken through into really big budget movies and I wonder if it's maybe because he's quite happy continuing to make these kind of low budget gems he also did uh, Crazy Mushashi versus 400 or one 400 versus one depending on kind of which um which country you're in it's got slightly different titles which was kind of one continuous 77 minute long shot of him going up against 400 stuntmen and um, playing the character of Miyamoto Musashi which is really great and there's a, a great cheap blu-ray available of that in the UK but the third window release of the Lumber Centre absolutely fantastic there's a wonderful wonderful commentary track on here and uh, by Arna Venema and Big Mike Leader both of whom again I've been very lucky to have had on my channel and really enjoying the commentaries they're getting a chance to do for Third Window it's joyful hearing them speak about Japanese cinema because they both absolutely adore it and I think it's a quite recent thing for them to get the chance to do commentaries for Japanese movies and this is the kind of the first big action film that they've been able to kind of like sink their teeth into Arna in particular is really knowledgeable on the kind of splatterhouse side of Japanese Japanese cinema that the director is heavily involved in, the same director who did uh, Meatball Machine, which kind of has its roots in the sort of um, the style that sort of um, some of Tsukamoto's earlier films, so kind of Tetsuo the Iron Man, um, that kind of like body horror, slight kind of gore element that um, he also did with Tak Sakaguchi in uh, Yakuza Weapon. I'm not that knowledgeable on, Arna really is, and he dives into that in the commentary, and Mike his all-round knowledge is absolutely incredible and it's kind of really great hearing him speak about Tak Sakaguchi and placing his sort of career in context really because I think they do highlight and do speak about the fact that Tax often seems to be a kind of an actor desperately in search of a project and that's also worked into the narrative of the one percenter he's kind of really struggling to try and get financing together and I wonder how much of that is really quite accurate to what Tax's actual kind of real life um, it's like in terms of trying to kind of get projects off the ground because they often shoot over really short periods of time with next to no budget but do really really inventive things and third window absolutely crushing it this year this is the kind of the third release of theirs that i picked up after getting uh, the wonderful uh, mad cats and river uh, three of which I would highly, highly recommend. Do please use Terracotta if you're picking up any of those releases. I've got reviews up for both of these. I did find myself kind of really thinking back to Mad Cats. This would make a really wonderful double bill, actually, because they're both really low-budget movies, very different types of movies, but both have really strong action elements, much more kind of like uh, martial arts focused or, or kind of pure action, real action focused in the one percenter and a little bit more kind of conventional stylized choreography but beautifully done in Mad Cats. But I did find myself missing 
Ayuni, the character, the, the kind of main female cat character in Mad Cats. Um, she would have been amazing in, in One Percenter. I, I think seeing the way that her choreography is through her YouTube videos, and again, I'll leave a link down to her Instagram profile, and you can kind of check out some of the videos that she makes for that. Um, her kind of type of choreography would have actually fitted really, really well. And there's a character in this, the daughter of one of the accusers, that's kind of a bit of a psychopath, um, who's got a, an artificial leg, and Ayuna would have absolutely crushed this. No disrespect to the actress that is in One Percenter, but it would have been nice to have an actress there that was a bit more capable of doing action, and Ayuna is amazing in that regard, and it would really be nice to kind of see the kind of the, the old school and the new school together in one movie. But yeah, grab them both as a double bill if you haven't had a chance to check out either film. If you're on the fence about this, buy it just for Mike and Arna's commentary because it's wonderful, but thoroughly enjoy the movie. I don't want to tell you too much more about the actual plot of the film because there are a couple of little twists and unexpected returns and beats that it has and it kind of went to some places that I didn't really expect it to do so, but thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. For an 86 minute long movie, it packs a whole bunch in. The action is really, really spot on, I think. It a, a, feels like a natural successor to Reborn. And again, go back and track out, track down that wonderful uh, Eureka version of Reborn if you haven't already, because that's in some ways maybe a slightly bigger budget, longer production, slightly slicker movie. Um, but I think kind of um, there's just equally as much heart in One Percenter and kind of it's always great seeing Tack lead a movie. He's so charismatic. He's really always kind of entertaining to watch and it's kind of wonderful seeing that he's still making movies 20 years after I first discovered him in Versus. So yeah, two thumbs way, way up for me for the One Percenter. Um, highly, highly recommended. I will leave links down below again to the Terracotta store because um, I would always recommend that you pick up any third window releases from Joey at Terracotta. He gives the most amount of kickback to Adam at Third Window. Another person who I've been very lucky to have on the channel. I will also leave a link down below to my interview with Adam from Third Window Films. Um, and my one single request, Adam, if you are checking this out, please switch to clear boxes. Um, I'm, I'm so against those blue boxes on Blu-rays and I find myself switching all of your releases over to clear boxes when they come through. But that's a moot point. Just keep on doing what you do, man, because you're picking some absolute gems this year. This is absolutely no exception. So yeah, grab the one percenter. I've been the Fanatical Dragon. Thank you so, so much for watching this. If you made it through to the end, do please consider clicking like and subscribe if you enjoyed my ramblings on the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care.